my co-founder Dave and I didn't have any history working in the barbershop industry or in tech for that matter. Both of us had been going to barbershops for years. I started going as a kid around six or seven with my dad and it was like 20 years later and the process of getting a haircut really hadn't changed at all. Very um, inefficient, long wait times, often a cash-based business and it seemed like software was really touching every other part of modern life except this one experience of getting a haircut was being totally unaddressed. My co-founder and I, we went to high school together over a decade ago. And back then we never imagined ourselves in computer science. I never saw anyone who looked like me in computer science. I didn't see myself um, in that space. A lot of people just don't consider themselves quote like computer science people. Um, and so they don't try it. However, despite that, we both ended up like pursuing CS given, you know, tons of really great mentors and ample academic support where we ended up becoming engineers engineers at Facebook and Google. And we realized there were so many people who were just like us, who were initially intimidated by computer science, um, but they never actually got the support to pursue it themselves. And so the reason I wanted to start a tech company is because I wanted to understand how could I create technology and work with others to help the people I grew up with live better lives. And so we started EdLeft because we realized there were way more people who could pursue tech and be engineers, but who didn't have the support systems to help them make it through. My name is Song Laran. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Squire. And Squire is a business management and point of sale software focusing on barbershops. I'm Erica Hairston, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Edlift. So my name is Arnell and Song, and I'm the CTO of Edlift. My name is Phaedra Ellis Lampkins. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Promise. Promise is a cost-effective way for people to pay off their government debt. The most important process in deciding if you want to start a company is the self-reflection around what's important to you and what things will help you feel confident. When I talked on the phone with Phaedra, it was just like so validating to hear from this badass black woman who has created such an impactful company that's mission driven, creating profit in the startup world, raised venture. She had done all of these things that I aspire to do. My job is to like make the room wider, right? So that we create opportunity for more people and then to shine a light in any room they're not in to talk about how remarkable they are. It was one of those things that kind of shut down that nagging voice in my head that told me I couldn't do it and it gave me something to reach for that I could see. For us, it is hard. If we're gonna try to spend this much money, this much time, this much energy, we wanna shift an institution that will be here long after we are. There's a high degree of risk with starting any company, whether that's a, you know, a, a, a pizza store on the corner, uh, you know, or a venture-backed startup. There's always gonna be risk as an entrepreneur. We thought to ourselves, if we were to quit our jobs and pursue solving this problem, how can we best set ourselves up for success? We did research essentially on like top companies um, and what did they all have in common that we could make sure we had in place to make sure Edlef was successful. The thing that we realized was the common thread around a lot of successful startups was Y Combinator. The benefit for us was structure. So it just put us on a timeline of when we needed to achieve things by. So like, okay, by this date, by demo day, we need to have the following things done. Building your MVP. You know, build a quick prototype of it, see if it's actually solving their problem and then iterate on it with them. One way we thought we could get our first users was, what if we stand outside of the classrooms of really big computer science classes on campus? And once classes end, we'll walk up to students and kind of ask them about, you know, what's hard about your CS class. And that is actually how we got our first like five to 10 students. We would literally uh, haul this heavy barber chair uh, to different co-working spaces uh, and, and bring the barber to the customers because we couldn't get the barber shops to use it. Um, and you know, we did that summer, winter, uh, through the snow, through the mud. I mean, it was, it was, it was not fun, um, but that's the process. You, you've got to go through those early trials uh, to make it out on, on the other end. Whenever we have a problem, we know that there's someone in the YC community that we could re reach out to uh, and they would help us. I think it's important for us as a YC community to create space and place for people. The more people who get involved 
in creating the future of technology, the more diverse solutions we will have to solve so many problems that are going unsolved now. That's another reason I think it's very important to, to bring diversity and, and, you know, frankly, like I would like to see more successful black founders and more black founders getting funded in particular, because I think that in terms of looking at the, the, the racial wealth gap in this country, I think that technology could be a means to, to help bridge that if people are given opportunities. You are solving a really big problem that you felt and is not being solved right now. And the more you trust yourself and your team and the process, the easier it is to be resilient and persevere.